The quest? <laughs> we spread the gospel to the east side Then we take it all over to the west side Can't forget about them brothers in the countryside Shout out to the prophets going worldwide We going worldwide out here making moves They directed and executive produced by the truth uh, If you looking for us, we explore it. You can find us in her doors Or the forest, a different car, but one accord uh, Cause we all teach the same word, no the source Hey, shalom, shalom, listening and viewing audience This is Israel United in Christ is the quest to wake up the 12 tribes radio show That's what? right uh, brought to you, I said Israel United Christ already, right? Yes. yes. Oh, Aaron on Heaven 98.3, Tallahassee, yes. Florida. Right. Mm-hmm. Streaming on the radio and YouTube. Right. Visit us at uh, IUIC Tallahassee on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, right. Twitter. Uh, we got a website, www.israelunite.org. We have a school here in Tallahassee, Florida, if you'd That's like to right. visit, um, at 3030. South Monroe Street, uh, 32301. Right. Because yep. we in Tallahassee. We said that a few times. Tallahassee. And, oh, we got a number. Yeah. You could call us at 855-484-4842, extension 7009. So, hey, all praises. We back. Officers, what you got? What you got for us? All praises. Okay. All praises, Cal. We finna, um... As you all know, this show is trying to show our people um, things that's not being taught to our people through religion, through um, education, through no form. So we're going to open your eyes to some stuff that's going on right here where you live at that you probably have not been privy to that the Bible explains. He said right where you live at. That means you better pay attention. I know last week. Pay attention. I know last week, hey, we put a challenge out, man, to the leaders out there, man. Right. You know, let's, hey, we can't do it better than the scriptures, right? Right. right, right so yeah. let's let's jump into some scriptures real quick. I know we put a challenge out last week to the leaders in the Tallahassee area, Leon County, mm-hmm. Gaston County. Yep. Right. You know, surrounding areas, and we're gonna put the challenge out again. Right. Ooh. This might be a weekly thing. Better say might it. be a weekly thing because I think, as a whole, the leaders in the black community. To be honest with you, my honest opinion. Bring it out. Have failed. Oh, no yes, doubt. Sir. Read this. Micah 3, please. The book of Micah, chapter 3 and verse 11. Come on. The heads thereof, judge for reward. Oh, and did I say 11? Start at 1. Micah, chapter 3 and verse 1. And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? Read. Who hate the good. And love the evil. Hey, I said it. Hey, it is what it is. I said it. I think that the leaders have failed because look, look at the state of our people today, man. We haven't our people been going to church this whole time, but look at the the, the crime rates. Look at the uh, adultery. Right. Look abortions. at look at the abortions yep. and all of that. And these are think about it. These are Christians committing these abortions, man. And they go they go to the church, but nobody's telling them what they're doing is wrong. Right. Okay. So I, I, I'll say it again. I think it fell. Why? Because what we just read, they hate the good and love the evil. That's what it is. They hate the good and love the evil because whatever feels good to the people, that's what they like to do. Right. But yet they they think that they deserve that uh, that leadership title. So, yeah, before we get into the topic, we're going to spend a little time about you leaders out there. Gotcha. Officers, feel free to jump in because I, I can go for a little bit on this topic. Hey, all praise the cap. It's good what you're bringing up. What our past, I mean, what the people have to learn how to do is hold their pastors accountable. How, they got to hold them accountable how Christ walked and how he carried himself when he walked the earth. When Christ walked the earth, Christ didn't run from confrontation. Christ stepped up to um, t- speaking about the Bible and Every any kind of day. disagreement about the Bible. C- Christ confounded those who spoke against, spoke about the Bible wrongly. So that's how your pastor should be carrying themselves. You better say it. Well, one thing I'll say, give me um, uh, Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. Uh, another thing that a lot of our people, like uh, uh, you just said earlier, Cap, a lot of people, they don't know better because they have not been taught. Yes. Um, yes. You know, we definitely Excellent. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. 
For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. You see that? It says the priest's lips. The priest's lips are what you would call today your pastors. What should, what should they have? And they should seek the law at his mouth. You see mm. that? God's laws you should be able to find in their mouth. Read the book. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Because their job is to be the messenger of God. Be the mediator from God to, to the people. But what do they do? They focusing on their own gain. Give me Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Showing you why we are in the estate that we are in today. Why we don't mind, you know, uh, you find all kind of things going on in our neighborhood. You see prostitution going on. You see drug dealer going on. You see uh, raping. All kind of nonsense is going on in our community. How can we fix this issue if we don't even know what is required from us? Read. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see that? The same knowledge we were referring to earlier. It says my people are destroyed because they lack of God laws. Read. That's right. Because thou has rejected knowledge. Because you so-called blacks rejected God laws. You didn't want to keep God's laws. What's going to happen to you? I will also reject thee. God said, I'm going to reject you. Now, then this is, this is why we're bringing this up. Because the Bible is a true book. Right. Uh -huh. The words that are spoken of in this Bible, they are true. You better read your That's Bible. That's what you have to understand. This is the word, but it comes to life. Right. Okay? We're trying to prevent the destruction and the judgment. And that's why we're, hey, every week, those who are in Tallahassee, Leon County, Gassie County, get used to this. We are going to hold the leaders accountable in our area. That's right. All right? Because guess what? Warning. I'm sorry. Destruction is coming, and this is the warning. This is the warning. I want to go back to my scripture. Go back to Micah chapter 3, verse 2. And like I said, I'm proving a point right here. I'm proving a point right here. And guess say. what? I want you, we want you to ask more questions. Right, right, right. right. How come you don't ask? How come everything the pastor say you don't? How do you just understand everything? No, there's got to be something that you are confused about. Right, right. So I'm going to present something to you. I have a question that you should ask to your spiritual leader. Right. Read this verse. Micah chapter 3 and verse 2. Come on. Who hate the good. And love the evil. All right. Can you give me Romans chapter 7, verse 12? So it said the leaders at this time of the Israelites, all right, it says that they hated the good and loved the evil. So let's see something real quick. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Watch this. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Come on. Wherefore the law is holy. The what? The law. The what? The law. The what? The law. It says the law is holy. Watch this. And the commandment holy. And the commandment holy. Read. And just and good. And just and what? And good. It says and just and good. Let, let me show you was something. Was that in the New Testament you just read? That, that was definitely the New Testament. Now, That's right. check this out. We just read what Micah 3, right? Yes. It says that they love the evil and hated the good. Meaning what? They love to break God's laws, but uh, hate it to keep God's laws. Right. Now watch this. Because I know a lot of people who hear the sound of our voice today, when you hear a law, you automatically think of the law of Moses. Uh-uh. Right. That's not what it's talking about. Could you give me Romans chapter 3 and verse 20 really quick? Because... Hey, this is an opportunity to educate our people. And like the officer bring out, you said uh, in Malachi 2, 7 and, and uh, Hosea 4 and 6, that our people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge because they don't know the laws of God. Right. So we're going to set it straight. All right, watch this. Romans chapter 3 and verse 20. Come on. Therefore, by the deeds of the law. Now, when it says the deeds of the law, what that's talking about right there? We'll help you out. It's talking about the law of sacrifice. Right. So the deeds of the law of sacrifice read, There shall no flesh be justified. We understand that. Why? Because our justification comes through Christ Jesus. That's, That's right. right. We understand that. We believe that firmly. Read, For by the law is the knowledge of sin. For by the law of sacrifice is the law of sin. Watch this, though. But now the righteousness of God. Now it says, now the righteousness of God, which is what? Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Watch this. 
Because remember, it said the law was good, right? Right. In the New Testament. Right. right. So it had to be talking about two different types of laws. Bring it out. Right. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Uh-huh. And it shall be our righteousness. Our what? Our righteousness. Read on. If we observe to do all these commandments. All these commandments. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. It's pretty easy to be understood. Right. right. Can we kill? No. Can we steal? Absolutely not. Right. Commit right. adultery. Better sin. So how could one say that the laws have done away with? Right. That is not the truth. Right. That could you finish Bible? that uh, verse for me, that please? Is- and it shall be our righteousness Come on. if we observe to do all these commandments. All of the commandments. Not the law of Moses, but the law of righteousness. Right. Read. Before the Lord our God, uh-huh. as he hath commanded us. Now, Romans 3 and 21 again. This should help you. This should be easy to be understood. Watch this. Romans chapter 3, verse 21. Uh-huh. But now the righteousness of God. Now the righteousness, meaning all the commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, uh, keep the Sabbath day, thou shalt not covet. Those commandments, the righteousness, read it again. But now the righteousness of God. Without the law. Without what? Without the law. Without the law of sacrifice. That's what it's talking about. Without the law of sacrifice. So we still have to keep the law, right. just not the law of sacrifice. Right. Could you give me Philippians 3? This one helps too. Give me Philippians chapter 3, and I want verse 9. Watch this. The it book be easy to be understood after this. We don't hear no nothing. Way. It's easy to be understood. Watch this. The book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Not having my own righteousness, read. Which is of the law. Which is of the law of sacrifice, read. But that which is through the faith of Christ. But that which is through the faith of Christ, read. The righteousness which is of God by faith. You see that thing right there? It's plain. Mm. Paul's not confusing. I think I know who's confusing you. Your leader. Oh, my goodness. We just discovered something tonight or today, whenever we air, right? Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) But we want to show you something. We want to show you. Go back to Micah 3. You know, and, you know, every week, like I said, we're going to hold all of the leaders accountable. You got to study, man. You have to study so you don't lead God's people astray. Watch this. Micah chapter 3 and verse 2. Come on. Who hate the good. Who hate the good. So the leaders of this time hated the good and did what? And love the evil. So we know that what? The law of righteousness is what's good. Give me Leviticus 11 and 7. Bring it out. Give me the book of Leviticus 11 and 7. Where do you find the law of righteousness? In the first five books. That's what you better read your Bible. Genesis through Deuteronomy. Okay? Watch this. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the swine. Though he divide the hoof. Though he do what? Divide the hoof. Read on. And be cloven footed. Come on. Yet he cheweth not the cud. He does not chew the cud. Read. He is unclean to you. God says the swine, which is what? The pig, the pork, bacon, pork chop, hog, maws, pig feet. That is an unclean animal. Thus save the Lord. Right. You know why? Because God didn't create that animal to be consumed. He created that animal to clean the earth. That's right. right. And in him holds all types of disease. We wonder why our people have high blood pressure, gout. Oh, it's probably because you're putting poison into your body. But the pastor's saying all is good. No, it ain't. No, it's not. Would you eat shark? Do you eat that? Actually, they will. (laughs) Yeah, they probably would. Do you eat lion? (laughs) Do you eat rats? A rattlesnake. Uh, roaches. Yeah, yeah. Ro- do you eat roaches? There you go. Let's go Lord catch some roaches goodness. and put them on the barbecue. Yeah. No, you don't eat it. Right. So why would you eat a pig? Right. I'm gonna let you know if you in the uh, in the uh, woods and a wild hog see you, he gonna uh, try to kill you and eat you. Yep. He'll eat a dead body. Right. If you defecate in the woods i'll use a good word yeah he gonna eat that yeah and then you say I wanna eat it's all good in christ this jesus i'm gonna fry this pork chop even the though pig. the pig just ate human Flesh. waste right and you gonna call it clean but guess what a chicken wouldn't eat human waste nope a cow wouldn't eat it right you understand goat. huh i said goat yeah goat. they wouldn't eat those things 
You know why? Because God created them to be consumed. Right. That's That's right. Finish that off. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. That's the key. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Do we have to keep that? Absolutely. Because that's, right. that's what's good according to the Bible. So ask your question. Ask your question. Hey, why are we doing that? Because Paul said, because you know, leaders love to run to Paul's writings. Right. Confused. They love to run to Paul. We read in Romans 7 and 12. You write that down. He said the law is good. Right. So, so. How come y'all being taught to break what is good? Right. Why is that? Give me, go back to Micah. I'm going to show you right now. Right. Bring it out. Micah chapter 3. Micah oh. chapter 3 verse 2. The book of Micah chapter 3 verse 2. Who hate the good and love the evil. Who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones. Read. Who also eat the flesh of my people. You know, how these leaders eat the flesh of God's people by telling them it's okay to break God's commandments. Right. Because the wages of sin is, is death, yeah. right? So why would Paul say the wages of sin is death and tell you that the laws are good? Why, why would he say these things? Hmm. And to be carnally minded, give me, let's get that one. Was that uh, Romans 8 and 6? And tell you to be carnally minded, which is what? Of the flesh, going against the spirit, going against the laws. Why would he say these things? Read that for me, please. The book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For to be carnally minded is death. So you got to ask your question. Why would Paul say these things? Obviously, because you still have to follow the commandments of God. That's right. Because you got to think of how dangerous of a statement that is to say that God's laws are done away with. So that means... You don't have to keep the Sabbath day holy. That means marriage is no longer a holy institution, meaning right. why get married if God's laws don't stand? This don't make one right. sense to me. So you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me there's no such thing as adultery under Christ? Huh? That makes sense why these pastors are going. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So you got to think right. about it. So you're saying God's laws done away. So now you're saying there's no adultery under Christ. Mm. Let's see what Christ said about that thing. Bring, right it, out. Bring it out. Matthew 5, 27. I'm just saying. We're just saying you might want to ask these questions. questions right. right. All right. Hey, don't get mad at us. Don't get mad at us. We just saying. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Come on. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Read. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. But Christ just magnified the law. He said you don't even got to commit the act. If you look and lust after her, that's adultery. Mm. But I thought the laws are done away with. Right. Hold on. Wait a second. That makes no sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. Go back to Micah 3 and 3. Micah chapter 3 and verse 3. Read. Who also eat the flesh of my people. Hey, that sounds like a grievous wolf. Right. Didn't Paul talk about that? Right. Hmm. He did. And he said, after, he, let's read it. Acts, Acts 20, 28. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Don't get mad at us. Right. You better read your Bible. We just reading the Bible. Acts chapter two, uh, 20 and verse 28. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Read. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. He said, take heed for a reason, leaders out there. Take heed for a reason. Why? Read. To feed the church of God. Read. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Come on. For I know this, that after my departing. Because you got to understand, Paul, the apostle Paul. He was under the true sect of Christianity. Right. Not the Christianity that you know today. Okay? The, 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 the Nazarene sect. Give me that Acts 24 and 5. Let me, let me help you leaders out. Let me show you something real quick. Okay? Remember when, Christ, uh, when Paul rode or walked the earth, he was hated. He was uh, ridiculed. He was slandered. Why? Because he followed the straightest sect of Christianity out there. All right, watch this. Acts chapter 24, verse 5. After he denounced himself being a Pharisee. Right. Read. For we have found this man, a pestilent fellow. 
They said he's a pestilent fellow. Why? Because every time he would teach, you would have people who did not want to accept his teaching. Although it was biblical, although it was true, it was contrary to what the scribes and Pharisees was pushing. Right. Go ahead. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow uh -huh. and a mover of sedition. So they're saying he always started riots. He didn't. All he did is teach the word of God. Right. It's those who didn't want to receive the words of God from him. Read. A mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world. Come on. And a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. A ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Remember, he was in the straightest sect. He was a Pharisee before, but now what? He left that behind. He left the hypocrisy behind. Right. He left the filthy lucre behind. He left uh, the pleasing of man behind. Right. And he followed Jesus of Nazareth. That's, That's right. right. That's why they said he's from the sect of the Nazarenes. That is Christianity in its purest form. Better said. Now go back to Acts 20. Pick up where you was at. Paul's saying, hey, the foundation of Christianity in its purest form he said, he gave us the warning. He said, after I depart. Watch this. Read it. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Come on. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Grievous wolves shall enter in among you. Read. Not sparing the flock. Not doing what? Not sparing the flock. Uh oh, I think Micah is a prophet. Yeah. Micah surely is a prophet of the Most High God. That's right. Go back to Micah 3 and 3. Micah. Guess what? The same thing he saw back then, we're seeing it now. Today, we saw it during the time of Paul, and we're seeing it present day. Right. You say you follow Christ, but you don't do anything he says? Hmm. Mm. Seems like you love the evil and hate, hate the, good. the good. Right. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Don't get mad at us. Micah 3 and 3. Micah chapter 3, verse 3. Come on. Who also eat the flesh of my people. Ain't that what wolves do? Don't they devour flesh? Yes, right. they do. Read. And flay their skin from off them. Uh-huh. And they break their bones and chop them in pieces. As for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. Read. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. Wait, there it is. Uh -oh. But then you want to pray to God saying, you want to say, hey, you can eat pork. But God, hear my prayer. No! God is not going to hear your prayer. You're right. crazy. Right. Because you don't do anything he says. Right. I'm sorry. Somebody else got to talk. This is, hey. this is insane. Christ said the same thing. Cal, give me that in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Exactly what you just said. Why, why are you calling on me and you don't do nothing I say? Read right. that. The book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. Read. And why call ye me, Lord, Lord? And do not the thing which I say. So don't think just because you call Christ's name, he's going to come and jump to your rescue. No. You got to be doing what Christ say. What did Christ tell us to do? John 14 and 15 is this simple. Read that. This is what Christ told us to do. He said, don't call my name if you're not going to do what I say do. Read that. John chapter 14, verse 15. Read. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So the churches are teaching God's laws, God's commandments are done away with. Christ said if you love him, you will be keeping his commandments. If you ain't keeping his commandments, don't call him. Hey, hey, really? oh. I'm sorry, before yes, you sir, go, yes, go can you go back to that chapter 9 and jump up to verse 31? Bring it up. Because in Micah, he say, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. Right. Why? Because they hate the good and love the evil. Mm. Better say. Read that. John chapter 9, verse 31. Watch this. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Read that again. Now we know that God Heareth not sinners. If you're saying that the law is done away with, guess who you are? Sinner. You are a sinner. Right? That's right. You see that? See how that works? Don't get mad at us. <laughs> right. Don't right. get mad. One more. I'm sorry. This one just came. Okay, Give me Jeremiah ahead. chapter 7, verse 8. And you out there who are allowing them to lie to you, shame on yeah. you. Same, same, same. So yeah. we got precepts for you too. Hey. Just take it for what it is. Don't take it as hate. We are brothers. But we love you, and we don't want to see you get destroyed, okay? Right. This is called love. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 8. Watch this, y'all. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. You trusting in lying words, that's going to bring you destruction. It's not going to profit you. Read. Will ye steal? Will ye what? Will ye steal? This sounds like a commandment, don't it? Right. Read. Right, right. Murder. That sounds like another one. Yep. Read. And commit adultery. Uh-oh. 
and swear falsely come on and burn incense unto Baal read and walk after other gods whom ye knew not like celebrating Christmas and Easter oh my right. goodness <laughs> oh my gosh that's idolatry yeah read and come and stand before me in so this house. are you going to still murder? Because think about it. If you're saying that the laws are done away with, mm. you're saying that you can steal and murder. Right. That's what you're saying. That's right. Well, as much as you want to fight it, that is what you just said. Right. Okay. Read verse 10. And come and stand before me. So in after you said that sin was okay. Dang. After you said that sin was okay, you come and stand before God. Read. In this house, Read. which is called by my name, Read. and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Wait a second. <laughs> he freed me from eating pork. What? <laughs> right. That doesn't make any sense. That's the, wow. thing I've heard of. That's the craziest thing that we've ever heard of. Go ahead, officer. Right. Hey, and we've been lied to. All right, and we've been bamboozled. All right, now go to Isaiah on really quick on the 56. 56, I want to say 10. Yeah. Y'all all right? And 10. All right, Isaiah, hard right, to detail these passages real quick. I'm going to read that. Isaiah, chapter 56 and verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. Uh-huh. They are all dumb dogs. They're all dumb dogs. Better say right, What is a dog going to go for to warn you? So these pastors are supposed to be warning the children of Israel of the destruction to come. Right. Uh, but they're worried about filthy lucre and on getting paid. Read. They cannot bark. Read. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Read on. Yea, they are greedy dogs. They are greedy dogs. On the, so they on the pull on the ties from the Old Testament, uh, but they're not even using that scripture, right? Hey, that's something we got to talk money. about. We yes, got to talk about that, bro. Mm -hmm. Does everybody know that the book of Malachi is not in the New Testament? Nope. Did you, did, did, you do, do you know that? <laughs> right. Because I know... From experience, when this ever this comes up, they always pull Malachi chapter three and right. verse eight. Can yep. a man rob God? And say, will a man rob God? I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I thought you don't believe in the Old Testament. I'm right. confused. I'm confused too. I'm confused. Let me show you something in the Bible. Let's go back to Micah. It's a good chapter. <laughs> it it's is. an excellent chapter. Yeah. I didn't even know we would spend so much time on the chapter. Right. But it's excellent. It's a good book and chapter. Go back. Read verses four and five. Micah chapter 3, verse 4. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. Why? Because you don't do anything he says. That's, That's right. why. Right. Read. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Ill in their doings and their sinful ways. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. Oh, man. It says the prop. Wait, aren't there people calling themselves prophets out there there is and telling you that it's all right in, in christ jesus that you ain't got to keep the laws all you do is but believe. the bible says it causes the people to err read that bite with their teeth uh -huh. and cry peace wait a second and say peace wait didn't we talk about has has your pastor taught you who babylon is in revelation yet nope Dang. has your pastor told you why all of the uh, the pestilence is taking place, the COVID nineteens and the monkey uh, monkey pox. Monkey pox yep. Nope. As the as the pastor told you, why the famine's happening yet? Nope. Meaning what? You think that everything's cool right now? No, 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 no. The destruction is right around the corner. Right. Right. But they're telling you it's peace. Read on. And he that putteth not into their mouths. They even prepare war against him. Now, there's something you said, Officer David. Jump up to verse 11. Watch this. Yep. Verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward. They do what? Judge for reward. Um, if you didn't know what this is going into, it means what? They judge their leaders because they're getting paid. Right. right. Yep. They're not really concerned with souls. Right. They may, they may invite you to the house to cook for you. They may do uh, a celebration at the church and get you some free food. But at the end of the day, yeah, they're they clocking pay. in and out right. to right. get that check. <laughs> this is nothing new here. Read. The heads thereof judge for reward. Read on. And the priests thereof teach for hire. They, they, they teach for hire, meaning what? They're not going to show up to certain places without getting that check. Yeah. Right. 
They're not going to show up in the pulpit every Sunday if they're not getting that check. Better mm. said. Mm. You got to think about it, man. Why? And you're right. Just think. Just think about it. Who? Why would you beg people to put money in a plate knowing they can't pay their bills? Oh, right, man. Dang. Would, is that is that the Lord you serve? No, no that's conscious. not in the Bible. That's just call them what they were. You could finish your scripture. Uh, let's finish this one and then go back to yours in, okay. Isaiah, in Isaiah. Yes, sir. And the prophets thereof, divine for money. Divine for what? Divine for money. Mm. For money. It's a big spectacle. Everybody line up in the pew. Does this sound familiar? Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Does this sound familiar? Everybody line up in that pew. That house that you've been dreaming of. You're going to get it if you sold twofold tonight. Mm. Now, let's ask, hasn't there been a lot of people have, who have not reaped? Yeah. Yes, there has. And you know what they're going to tell you? Because you didn't believe. But you told me all I had to do was sow. Uh, right. <laughs> right. But here's the thing. The fact that gain to you is righteousness, you have already, you're already behind. Since when does material possession have anything to do with serving God? Bring it out. Better say it. What, what is this? Is this the, what is, like, where did that come from? What scripture? Let me show you something. Give me first Timothy this uh, six and five. Bring it out, Cap. Let me show you something. Let me show you something real quick. And we do have a topic we're going to discuss. We're going to get to it. <laughs> you be all right. Oh, we've fallen. But this is, this is not of God, brothers and sisters. So we, you leaders, step up your game. Right. And repent. Read this. The book of first Timothy, chapter six and verse five. Come on. Perverse disputings. What is it? Perverse disputing. It's, it's a perversion. Mm. Since why do you think, what do you, what do you think this is about? You're supposed to serve the Lord so you could be saved. You're not saved right now. Right. You still have to work. You still got to pay your nine to five. Your people are still getting murdered in the streets. What are you saved from? You're not saved. And it's, it's, it's perfect. We're going into our reparations today, man. Yes, right. That's today's topic. We're going into reparations. What do you say from you're not? Read. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. Of corrupt minds. Read. And destitute of the truth. And destitute of the truth of God's commandments. Because you say that they're done away with. Right. right. Read. Supposing that gain is godliness. Supposing what? That gain is godliness. Where did that come from? Right. It came from a perverse mind. Ah, that's right. It's time to wake up, man. Read on. From such withdraw thyself. Do what? From such withdraw thyself. God says to run. Right. Better read your Bible. It's danger. Like mystical. Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't get mad at me. All right. All right. Hey, John 8, 32. Then we'll get into the topic, man. Yes, sir. All right, That's don't get mad school, at me. So, yeah, I know. Show my age. So God telling them to run away from that prosperity doctrine. That's 100% correct. That's not of God. It's not right. of God. It's not of God, man. Yeah. Just stop it. You better read your Bible. You know, if, if you only serve the Lord for, for finances, I'll help you out. You're not going to make it to heaven. Nope. I don't... Oh, I, I can't believe he said that. I said it. <laughs> Get mad. Right. It is what it is. It's not in there. Right. What's crazy, Cap, is these pastors be showing the people who they are, and they still trust them. Remember Joel Osteen been teaching that prosperity for years, and then as soon as the storm hit, he locked his doors of his church. He did. Locked them out. <laughs> right. All that coming to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. He did. Oh, Read right. what you got. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth's going to make you free, man. This isn't hate. Notice we went through the scriptures the whole time, man. Right. And you know it's true. Many won't, uh, many won't accept this, but some will. Right. right. And that's what the people were teaching, too. Hey, ask these questions, uh, brothers and sisters. Ask these questions. You got to be able to go precept upon precept. Right. Okay? Hey, do me a favor, man. Pull up that first article, bro. I mean, uh, officer. Read that for us. The U.S. moves closer to compensating blacks for generations of racism. Hmm. There's something in the history called slavery, right? Which took place, you know, between 1619 and 1863, right? Which is a long time. Right. We're 400 years removed, right? Not, not 400 years, about 200 odd years removed. 
So go back to the title, please. It says U.S. moves closer to comp. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Wait, why has it taken so long? Right. <laughs> there you go. Why is it taking so long? Guys, guys, don't forget. Where do we learn? I'm just going to throw it out there. Don't get mad. It's facts. It's true. So fact check us. Don't get mad and send a complaints. Where do we learn Christianity from? Bring it out. Bring it out. United States of America. I'll leave it at that. Right? Now, I said Christianity in its purest form earlier. You ain't going to ever read the, 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 the word Christianity in the Bible. That's right. The Christianity that you know today is not what we read in Acts 24 and 5 with right. the Apostle Paul, with the sect of the Nazarenes. You're not going to find that over here. Okay? Because that's not the same form. I'll just let you know something. America taught you different than what the Bible actually says. Right. right. So don't get mad at us. Just examine it, man. We're not speaking ill of anybody. This is historical fact. And we do have these facts. Believe it or not. But we're trying to do what? You know, spark, spark the uh, curiosity in your mind. Right. So you can go out there. Don't take our word for anything. Never believe us. This is just a radio show, man. Right. But you should go. You know what? Let me go see if these guys are telling the truth or if they're lying. Right. It's up to you to decide. We're not trying to force anything on anybody. That's right. Okay. Uh, could you read the title again, please? U.S. moves closer to compensating blacks for generations of racism. I'm just going to let you know. That looks. It sounds a little backwards. What you got, officer? Right. Why, why they ain't moving closer to helping Ukraine right now? Why, how come everything else trumps us? <laughs> They, they can give money to everybody else. They give money to Israeli, everybody but the blacks that, that, that helped build this country. That is true. They did give, what, one, what was it, one billion? No. What, no I, I'm talking about the, the weapons. Was it 100 million? No, no, no. no. What was it? Eight they, billion. Eight billion. Uh, they keep giving billions. They, yeah, they, billions at a time, man. Right. It was 14 billion. Um, they, yeah, like, like you just said. Amazing. But they're moving closer to compensate. That's a little backwards there. Right, yep. um, let's read some of this, please. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, not even Martin Luther King gets south of the tracks. The north side of town encompasses the predominantly black, low-income neighborhoods, and MLK Jr. Boulevard runs right through it. On the other side of the tracks, literally, neighborhoods become affluent, overwhelmingly white, and MLK Boulevard, the same roadway, is instead called Cincinnati Avenue. So it's just showing you the blatant disregard for the people of color. Right. And why do we do this show? We're trying to show you something. This is the quest to wake up the 12 tribes. That's when you see things like this befall a certain race or class of people, it's not by accident. It's actually by design. You are the people of God, the Israelites. Right. So we're trying to show you. There's a reason why you're going through this. Let's read on. It's merely a change in street name, but it says a lot. The message is that the message in that is that whites aren't going to give praise to a man who promoted justice for all, but especially for blacks, says 55-year-old Cleo Harris, a fourth-generation Tulsan who owns and operates a store near, M near MLK Boulevard. But even more so, Harris believes the delineation is a way for whites to tell blacks you're still not wanted on our side of the tracks. Well, there it is. It's still there. And you wonder, why is this hatred there? Why is this hatred there? You have to question these things. You have to question these things. Anybody have uh, something they want to yeah, say? Yeah, let me say something. And if you even go uh, with history, you learned of what had happened to them in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This was a, a successful neighborhood. Every brothers and sisters that was living um, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they, was, they were professionals. They all were doing their own thing. They had their own banks. They had their own university. They had Medicine. their own Theaters, education. buses, yes. everything. Plain. Ooh. But guess what? What did they do? They destroyed the whole town. And now, and now you're talking about what, what you see here is not, it's just to show you their true character. What we must do as a people, we have to come together with like mind. Well, the Bible says there's a group of people that are going to have perpetual hatred toward the Israelites. How many of y'all pastors are telling y'all about that? Yeah, read that. Ezekiel. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter 35, verse um, 3. 35, verse 1 and verse 5. 
the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35 and verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel. So it's talking about somebody that had a perpetual hatred and shed the blood of the children of Israel. But I guarantee ain't no pastor talking about that in church. There are some people that are going to forever hate you. And you're going to see it through their actions towards you every watch, day. Watch this. To, don't lose your thought. But what Officer Badiah is mentioning is something called Black Wall Street. Yep. Right. Which existed. All right. But in 1921. Right. There was a race riot right. that took place. And in retaliation to the blacks, they dropped bombs on Tulsa, Oklahoma, and destroyed all of it. Right. Destroyed all of it. That's what the officer is mentioning. You know what was funny? Killed hundreds of people. Too. Hundreds right. of people, yes. You know what was funny about that? They, they say anything, they, they write a law saying anything that is burned down cannot be rebuilt. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Dang. That's the opposite of reparations. Made sure they couldn't rebuild themselves back up. <laughs> yep. Do me a favor. Could you go to the third article? You know, why are we bringing these things out? These type of conversations make people feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Hey, let me show you something. I got to show you something. Um, give me Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. Right. Why are they going to be offended? They're going to be offended at the word of God. Right. Okay. It says, shall many be offended. So like I said, yeah, these might be uh, conversations that make you feel uncomfortable. But hey, these types of topics, they're in the Bible. So if you feel uncomfortable, that means that you're offended at the word of God. Right. right. Better say So these are the things that you have to um, understand and recognize and you, you, got, you got to get over it. Now, I want to show you something uh, because of what the officers were just bringing out about Tulsa, Oklahoma, not being able to build and things like that. Read this uh, title for me. Watch this. Six times victims have received reparations, including four in the U.S. All right. Six times in history that sorry. Go back. Go back. Go back. It says six times that victims. It didn't say that blacks and Hispanics and right, Americans. No. It just said victims six times. Scroll down. This is one of the six. Read that. The Holocaust. The closest analog to reparations for slavery and Jim Crow is probably the reparations that West Germany agreed to pay after the Holocaust. Wait a second. Did they go through slavery and Jim Crow? You better I, I, bring it out. Hmm. I don't know where they get that from. Wait a second. Last time I remember, last time I checked, my forefathers... Went through slavery and Jim, and Jim Crow. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Not the Germans. For a long Medicine. time too, Cap. This is, this is, this should be alarming. This should be, right. you should be appalled. Right. And you should be angered mm. that Germans who did not go through slavery and Jim Crow like our ancestors did received reparations that we never saw. Wow. This is ridiculous. Go back and read that again. The closest analog to reparations for slavery and Jim Crow is probably the reparations that West Germany agreed to pay after the Holocaust. A major component was the, 700, was the 7 billion. The what? 7 billion dollars West Germany agreed to give to then young state of Israel. Now, check this out. I want to show you something, guys. So that's that. Scroll down and go to Rosewood. Because Rosewood, we're in Florida. Everybody should be able to relate to this history. Yep. Another black city that was burnt to the ground and many of our people were killed because of a lie. Because of a lie. Read this, please. Rosewood. In 1923, the primarily black town of Rosewood on the Gulf Coast of Florida was destroyed in a race riot that by official accounts, that by official counts, killed at least six black residents and two whites. That's not even Those, true. No, nah, that's not, no. Go ahead. Though some descendants of the town's residents have claimed many more were killed and dumped in mass graves. Mm -hmm. In 1994, the state of Florida agreed to a reparations package worth around $3.36 million in 2014. Now, check this out. From 1923 to 1994. That's about 71 years. Wow. 
There's a now I know this because I've traveled to Rosewood and I know the facts. The only way you could get any of that reparation money is to prove that you are a descendant of those who were killed. Right. That's the only way to do that. Now you know it's crazy. Those all of those history and all of the records are burnt up. Right. Yep. So guess what? You can't prove that you're a descendant of the Rosewood Rosewood massacre. Wow. Meaning what? That 3.36 million. None of our people touch it. Even that is a slap. I was in just gonna say, look how little that is compared to right. <laughs> like 3.3 million for killing my family. But there you go. Wow. The Holocaust got seven billion. Seven billion. We got right. Three million. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Now what you're gonna learn is you're looking in all the wrong places. Give me Lamentations 4 and 17. Bring it, Bring it out. out. There you go. You're looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love. <laughs> okay? Read this. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Read. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Our eyes, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites' eyes have done what? Yet failed. For yet our, what? Yet failed. Has failed. We already said it. Leaders, you have failed. Right. You said it. Miserably. Read. For our vain help. For our vain help. Read. In our watching, we have watched for a nation. For a what? For a nation. Read. That could not save us. That can't save us. They're not going to give us reparations. They're not going to give us reparations. You know where the reparations going to come from? The most, most high, high God of Israel. Yes. Yes. Let's go to book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 15, man. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and verse 15. Come on. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Why are you crying for your affliction? How come they won't give us this? How come they won't give us reparation? How come you won't love me? I am a man. Think about how pathetic that is. Mm. We have to tell somebody, remind them that I am a man. What is this? Come on. Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. Uh huh. Because thy sins were increased. Read. I have done these things unto thee. When will you realize that it's God that has done this to you? Right. And why did he do it? Because you increased your iniquity. Right. You're saying that it's okay to sin. Right. You're saying you love the evil and hate the good. Right. Read. Therefore. All they that devour thee shall be devoured. This is the reparations of the Most High God. We did not make this up. Right. I, ain't, I don't have to break that down. That's what the Bible says. Get mad at the Bible. Right. Read verse 16 again. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Read. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Read on. And they that spoil thee shall be spoiled. Read. And all that prey upon thee. Will I give for a prey? Read. For I will restore health unto thee. We don't have to worry about uh, diseases no more. AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea. We ain't got to worry about none of that no more. Read. For I will restore health unto thee. Read. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. Come on. Saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast. They called us an outcast. You know what, what that is? Minority. Right. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They call us that today. Mm -hmm. Read. Saying, this is Zion. Whom no man seeketh after. Who nobody likes. Doesn't matter if we're here or in the Middle East. Nobody likes us. Right. right. Read. Thus saith the Lord. Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent, tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heap. Meaning what? Our own city, our own nation is going to be rebuilt. This is real reparations right here. Right. Because we've never seen reparations in the United States anywhere, and we're never going to. Right. You know when our reparation comes? Uh, when Christ returns. That's right. Read. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Read. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. Meaning what? All of the, all of the, uh, the atrocities and all the death we face, God said he's going to multiply us and we should not be few anymore. Read. I will also glorify them. Read. And they shall not be small. They shall not be small. Come on. Their children also shall be as aforetime. Uh-huh. And their congregation shall be established before me. Mm -hmm. And I will punish all 
that oppress them. Uh oh, read on. And their nobles shall be of themselves. And it and says, Our nobles shall be of ourselves. We'll have our own government. Right. That's read. right. And their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. Uh huh. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me? Saith the Lord. So this is what we have to look forward to. We are going to get our reparations, but only in righteousness, man. Right. That's right. Only in the keeping of God's commandments. So we're going to wrap up right there. And Lord's Will Life Last, we'll be back with another show next week. And we still going to hold you leaders accountable. Better say. And we're going to teach the say of the Lord. All right. That's right. This is the Quest to Wake Up the 12 Tribes radio show brought to you by Israel United in Christ. Right. We want to thank Heaven 98.3 for having us. Yes, we got a school here in Tallahassee, Florida, 3030 South Monroe Street, zip, uh, zip code 32301. Our telephone number is 855-484-4842, extension 7009. Call us, ask us questions, visit right. us, meet your brothers all right, and with that, we say shalom. 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 We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.